Now that we've selected a library and actually created a script, let's take a look at how to run the script and examine the results. Robot Framework is command line driven, and we can use either the PyCharm IDE or the Windows command line to run it. Right now we're going to talk about PyCharm IDE, and in the next unit we'll talk about more options. The important thing to know is that we use the command PyBot to run our scripts. So in its most basic sense, we'll type in PyBot, then the name of your script, but if you want to control where the test results go, you'll use dash D and you'll specify a path to those results. So let's take a look at how this works in PyCharm. The easiest way to run a script is by going to View, Tool Windows, Terminal, which you can also open by using Alt F12 as you see there. That pops open this little terminal window down here and you can see that it's already pointing at my project base directory. So if I want to run a script, all I need to do is type in this command PyBot and provide a path to my script. Since my script is contained in a tests subdirectory, I'll type in tests slash amazon.robot. Now that's all I need to be able to run my script. However, if I do run it right now, my test results are going to wind up in the root directory of Amazon. I would prefer to have my test results in the results directory. So to do that, I will use dash D results, where results is the name of that directory right there. Of course, I could pass in an absolute path to some other network share or wherever you want to put your results, but for now, I want my results to go in that results directory right there. So if everything works as expected, I should just be able to hit return. My test case will run. It will open the IE browser, navigate to amazon.com, and then we'll close the browser. Let's try it. I hit return. So you can see that completed fine, and it shows me the output of the console down here. Let's use the up arrow key on the keyboard to put that same command back in. And this time, let's change this to Chrome, just to show how easy it is to change browsers. I'll hit return. And this time, you see the Chrome browser opened up and closed. We'll do the same thing with Firefox. Up arrow and run. and now Firefox opens and closes. So it's that simple to switch browsers out. Now obviously, in future scripts, we're going to parameterize the browser, maybe put it in as a variable, and we'll be able to feed it in at the command line when we actually run the script. But for now, we'll just leave it here for simplicity's sake. Down here in the terminal, it spits out the console output. You can see that it included my documentation from both the suite and the test case. It gave me a summary of my results, and it's telling me where I can find my results. Since I gave it a dash D results, it put them into the results directory, and if I open up that, you can see there they are. The cool thing about PyCharm is I can right-click on report, and I can say open in browser, and then select any browser I want to. If all your tests pass, the entire report turns green. It would be red if any of your test cases failed. So you can see again, the documentation I included in my suite winds up here. I get a start time and an end time and a total duration, which is elapsed time right here. It gives me statistics by tag, statistics by suite. So if you broke it up into multiple files, you'd have test results by each file because the name of the suite actually comes from the name of the file right here. If I want to see more details about what happened, I can click on log.html. And again, at the top, that gives me my global statistics. But down here, it gives me a tree that I can navigate to see exactly what happened. Notice it contains my test case exactly as written. User must sign in to check out. And if I expand that, I've got my documentation, which tags are on it, the start, end, and elapsed time for the test case, whether it passed or failed, and then a chronological listing of all the keywords that were executed. So you can see we used open browser keyword and closed browser keyword, both from the Selenium 2 library. And if you drill into each one of these, you get even more information about what happened. So notice that the open browser opened up browser IE to base URL amazon.com. So we get a lot of really fantastic information out of the box for free from Robot Framework. I didn't have to write a thing to get this excellent results file. Now, if there had been a problem or a failure in my test case, it would have actually injected a screenshot of the client area of the browser that I could click on and see the state of my application. So you can see it gives you timestamps for when the test case began, and timestamps for every subsequent keyword. Really great results file.